The Ford Contour and its sister car, the Mercury Mystique, were North American versions of the European Ford Mondeo. They were released to replace the Tempo and Topaz. They were offered from 1995 through 2000. In 1998, Ford refreshed the appearance of the car and they introduced the SVT Contour as a way to raise the profile of the car. They wanted to offer a car that was a performance variant of the Contour. This is one of the SVT cars that's almost forgotten today. And it's the car we're going to focus on right now. Ford took aim at the European performance sedans with the Contour SVT and specifically the BMW M3. They wanted to turn potential import buyers into Ford owners with this car. Ford's in-house special vehicle team got to work and upgraded the 24-valve dual overhead cam Duratec 2.5 liter V6 until it produced 195 peak horsepower and 165 foot-pounds of torque. The SVT group used some old school tricks to get this increased horsepower number. The upper intake was honed and polished to maximize airflow and several SVT components replaced the stock units. They used specially ground camshafts, an increased diameter throttle body, a lighter flywheel, a larger capacity conical air cleaner, and a 2.2 inch stainless steel exhaust system split into two mufflers with polished tips. This gave the Contour more usable horsepower and torque across the RPM range. This engine was paired solely to a 5-speed manual transmission. Motor Trend Magazine test results saw 0-60 to 60 times in 7.5 seconds, passing the quarter mile in 15.7 seconds at 88.7 miles per hour. Next, the SVT team modified the suspension. It was fortified with recalibrated springs and modified shock valving. GSC 205-55ZR16 tires were mounted on 16 by 6.5 inch aluminum wheels. Then a disc with four channel ABS brakes were added. Front rotors were 10.9 inches. These were borrowed from the European market Mondeo. Motor Trend Magazine saw a decrease in 60 to 0 mile per hour stopping distance of 3 feet over the stock contour. SVT models are further enhanced with an exclusive front fascia with a unique grille and larger fog lamps. Body colored side skirts and a distinct rear valance were added to give the car a lowered stance. Available colors included black, silver, red, and green. Curb weight came in at 3,068 pounds and the base price of the Contour SVT was $22,500. During testing, Motor Trend Magazine stated, and I quote here, it feels every bit as special as Ford would have you believe. All told, the Contour SVT is an attractively priced sports sedan for those whose cravings say Mustang, but whose realities dictate four doors. Ford sold 6,590 SVT Contours in 1998. Performance Substance Exclusivity and value. Introducing the nineteen ninety eight SBT Contour. The engine. A high output 2.5 liter Ford Duratec V6, producing over 190 horsepower. 1999 was almost a complete carryover year for the SVT Contour. There were no changes to the car or its options. Ford sold 2,760 SVT Contours in 1999. 2000 brought an additional 5 horsepower and 4 foot-pounds of torque to the Contour's engine. Other than that, there was nothing new of note, and the 2000 model was a carryover from the previous two years of production. Ford had already made a decision to cancel Contour production after this year. Sales of the SVT Contour were at a low of 2150. And that was the end of the Contour. On a side note, this is a car that Ford spent $6 billion dollars on developing for the North American market, but it never really gained a lot of success. Now, why it didn't gain that success is a question that almost remains unanswered today. It was a car that got good press reviews. The owners reported very few mechanical problems. So what was the issue? Why didn't the Contour get acceptance in the US market? 
It was only slightly bigger than an Escort and looked like a scaled down version of the Taurus. Also, it wasn't that much less expensive than the Taurus. I think Ford's other products ate into the potential buyer pool of this car. It replaced the Tempo and Topaz. That wasn't a car that had a good reliability record. It actually it did pretty poorly. And maybe some of that bad reputation rubbed off on the Contour. The late 90s were also the time where the SUVs started to exert their dominance in the marketplace. And they became more of a family vehicle as opposed to a four-door sedan. I don't think you can point at any one of these things as a reason why it failed in this market. But I think a combination of all these things ultimately doomed the car. After all, it was a car that was made to compete with the best cars of Europe. Yet BMWs, Audis, Mercedes, these are somewhat status symbols. And if you're looking for status, you're probably not going to buy a Ford, no matter how good a car it is or how well it drives. That's what I think. But what do you think? Let me know your answers down in the comments below. The Contours do have a cult following. There's a lot of folks that take these cars for what they are. They're a good performance car for the money. In today's market, and I looked just recently, there's some nice examples that can be had for less than $5,000. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. That way other people see it. Also, I'd like to thank my subscribers. Your encouragement and comments are what keeps this channel going. If you have an interest in the cars of the 80s and 90s, maybe check out this video over here. It's on the MM12 Thunderbird. It covers all the features, all the models, all the special editions. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you.